scripture. Good morning. How y'all doing out there? Let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet. And as you're standing, wave across the room to somebody. Amen. And say, I am a living testimony. Come on, say it to somebody else and say, I am a living testimony. If you don't mind giving a hug or a tap on the shoulder or a fist bump. Amen. Praise the Lord. It is Youth Sunday. Amen. Let's give God a praise for our youth. Amen. That we are growing and glowing in God. And we thank God just for them. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Good morning, church. Uh, before we begin, we have a very special thing that we're going to do right now. We have a young man, Robert Lee, that talked to us this morning and said he wanted to give his life to the Lord. So before we do anything, we're gonna, I'm going to come down to him, and we're going to give him the right hand of fellowship. Robert, I want you to know this is a very, very important thing that you did, you did this morning. And you've given your life to Christ. And being a youth Sunday is no coincidence. We are your family now. We're going to love you. We're going to support you. I just want you to repeat after me. Jesus. 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 Today. Today. I give you my life. I give you my life. You are my Savior. You are my Savior. And I love you. And I love you. And I believe. And I believe. In my heart. In my heart. That you died for me. That you died for me. I am free. I am free. From the world. From the world. And I am yours. And I am yours. And you have my heart. And you have my heart. And I love you, Lord. And I love you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, I did not expect this. Please forgive me if I um, get emotional because all of our young men are not out there doing crazy things to, to have it. And it's give him part of you. Let's just love on our, our new member. Let's just give the Lord a, th a, a just a thunderous round of, of praise. What a way to start the day, church. Hallelujah. Working in this place, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, moving in our midst, I worship you, I worship 
Let us bow our heads. Eternal God, Father, we come this morning, Lord, with thanksgiving in our heart. We come today, Lord, because you woke us up this morning. You gave us another opportunity, Lord, just to come one more time into your anointed sanctuary to lift up praises 
unto you. We exalt you today, Lord. We magnify you today, Lord. Because if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you today for waking us up, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to have warm blood that will run through our veins. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Because we know without you, Lord, we cannot do nothing. In the mighty name of Jesus. We come, Lord, this morning, Lord, to say, Lord, forgive us, Lord, for yesterday's sins. Because, Lord, we ask, Lord, that you will give us a spirit to repent of our wrongdoing. We ask today, Lord, that you will renew our mind. Let us be Christ-like, Lord, because we know that the enemy tries to kill, steal, and destroy. But your word, Lord, is there for our protection. And we thank you for your word. Because your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And we walk by faith and not by sight. You said that the steps of a good man is ordered by the Lord. Order our steps today, Lord. Keep us from going down wicked passes. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, we ask today, Lord, that you would lay your approval upon this service. In the mighty name of Jesus. We ask, Lord, that you would continue to bless our youth choir, Lord, as they sing songs unto you, Lord. It could have been somewhere else this morning, Lord, but they chose to be here, Lord, to magnify you. So we give praises to that. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I pray this morning for these men that's sitting right next to me, standing right next to me, Lord. You said in your word, Lord, that how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Father, we ask that you allow us, Lord, to be ordained leaning posts for this ministry. In the mighty name of Jesus. Touch those right now, Lord, that's on their sick beds right now, Lord. Those that's going through bereavement right now. Lord, we ask that you will give them strength to endure. And most of all, Lord, give us strength to endure as we continue to walk in this journey that you have assigned us to be in. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray that all hearts and minds say, Amen. Amen. Oh, down through the years, the Lord's been good to me. Hallelujah. Down the years, I know the Lord's been Oh, down through the years, I know the Lord's been good to me. Hallelujah, the Lord really been good, been good to me. Oh, all of my life, you know the Lord's been good to me. 
I have a Shab Shabbat praise in my spirit. And I don't mind getting loud for the Lord right now. Come on, give him a Shabbat praise in here. Give God a real praise. Hallelujah, Jesus, for your goodness and your mercy. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. All that's within me, bless his holy name. Deke was saying the Lord been good. Then the second part of the line, the Lord really been good to me. Amen, somebody. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It was good that we already start off this morning with a young man coming to be a part of this ministry before we could get started. We have about about 14 over there ready to be baptized today in the name of Jesus. Come on, give God praise in here. Amen. It's good to see. And a lot of them are, look like all of them young people. Man, that's a blessing. I mean, they're going to have a long time to work for the Lord. A long time to give God uh, their service. Amen. Amen. That's a blessing because in a lot of cases, Jesus uh, will accept us at any age. But some of us don't get there until we're just about dead. And what that does, it don't give you a lot of time to work for him. Because the first 80 years was you've been serving. But he said, come on in. Give me what you got. Amen, somebody. So when you see young people, that means they have a long time. If God spared their life, they have a long time to serve God and be a witness for the kingdom of God. But no matter what age you are, when God saved you, start telling people how good he is. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, we're going to get our hearts and minds. Let, let's do this before. Come on, our sister. Uh, Minister Michael Wing, come on before we do our announcement. Uh, this Wednesday, uh, we're inviting you out like we do every Wednesday for our midweek service. We're going to do something a little different this Wednesday. We, are, we have members in this church that uh, have not uh, come forth, and some of them are gifted in singing in other areas. So we're just going to have an open night of worship with some of the members that have not uh, done anything but uh, just join this ministry, and they want to share uh, their gifting, and we're going to worship in songs in other areas. So this Wednesday is going to be a little different. I'm going to still um, uh, have probably a word of prayer. I'm going to do something. I'm going to speak something. If it takes five seconds, I'm going to give you something that God will let you uh, take with you along with worshiping. So uh, I'm going to have Sister McElwain. She's, uh, God put it in her spirit, and I said, okay, let's do it. And uh, she's going to tell you a little bit more about it. Maybe have some of the people stand, whoever the case may be. And so I'm asking you to come out. Amen. Uh, come out Wednesday and let's be a part of a night of uh, worship and a night of uh, uh, just encouraging those who are getting up for some of them for the very first time. Amen.
God bless you. Good morning, Parkview. Um, the Lord laid on my heart that there are people in the ministry who have gifts and for whatever reason, they haven't been able to join the choir or join the praise team. And also that the, the people who minister all the time would have an opportunity to just sit back and worship and, and enjoy somebody else ministering. Um, you know, us, us folks who minister like to worship sometime too. So um, uh, I just let the Lord lead me to the people who would minister. There'll be some who you've heard from before, and there'll be some who you've never heard from, and there'll be some who ministered in the past and haven't ministered in a long time. But God inhabits the praises of his people. And so the objective of that night is to worship. That's why it's called a night of worship. We want to just give it all to God, all the worship that we have in us. We want to give it to the Lord and just, just let him use us. And, and so we will have... Um, Singing, obviously, from and there'll be people, like I said, you know and that you don't know. The dance ministry is scheduled to minister. The, there'll be poetry. And there'll be rap. Um, there'll be rap from people that you've heard from before. And there'll be rap from people you haven't heard from. So, um, and oh, for all those who are participating, don't forget we have a meeting after service today. Um, if you could just stand for just a minute so people can see who you are, just everybody who's here who's going to minister, please stand. Oh, we'll have a skit. That's right. There'll be the Christmas skit. Thank you. The, 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 we'll have the skit, too, as well, and that's going to be short. Um, we would like you to come and encourage these people because it's not easy to get up here, you know, and it's not easy, especially if you've never done it before. So I, I, I um, encourage you to come and just um, be an encouragement to others uh, as they minister their gift and worship. Amen? Amen. Second Timothy 1, 7 says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. Good morning, Parkview. I'm Sister Chloe Moran, and these are your announcements for today. Parkview family, it's that time of year when we as a church family extend a helping hand to help a fellow brother or sister in Christ that may need help during this Christmas season. Therefore, our angel tree has been placed in the foyer by the welcome desk to bless many families as God has blessed you. There is no limit to how many angels you would like to sponsor. However, we ask for your cooperation and to please register with one of our attendants before removing an angel from the tree. 
Members from the Word Ministry will be available for and after service if you have any questions. We truly thank you for sharing your blessings with our families. To God be the glory, the Word Ministry. Please join us on December 13th for a night of worship. We will worship through singing, acting, dancing, poetry, and more. It's going to be amazing. Come out and worship with us and bring a friend. Minister Denise McElwain. To all youth and young adults, you are invited to the PCLC end of the year Christmas bash, ages nine through 19. Come out and enjoy the activities on December 16th, starting at 3 p.m. until 5 p.m. We will have food, fun, and lots of games. For more information, see Sister Annette Smith or Minister Donald Twitty after church in the lobby. And we will welcome all adult volunteers to help make this Christmas bash a success. Thanks much. Attention all Parkview Ministries. The Haines City MLK Parade is Saturday, January 20th at 11 a.m. If your ministry would like to represent Parkview and participate in the event, please contact Sister Sharon McGriff as soon as possible. Parkview, please send all announcements Tuesday evening before that Sunday to announcements at pclctheview.org. Be sure to spread the word about our monthly food giveaway here at Parkview every first Friday of the month. Text PCLC to 833-600-9222 to sow a seed into the ministry. Also, you can view every service live from anywhere when you subscribe to Pastor Henry Babers on YouTube. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss a word. To our visitors, on behalf of the Parkview Christian Life Center family, we welcome you and thank you for joining us. God planned for you to be right here, and we know he has a word for you that will change your life. As a reminder, all services are recorded, so we ask that you please limit your movement during the sermon. Please make sure all small children are accompanied to the restroom by an adult. Also, it is very important to turn off or silence all cell phones. And please, no eating or drinking in the sanctuary. Let us respect God's house. Now prepare yourself for the word of excellence and to receive the kingdom vision and provision God has for you. Again, I'm Sister Chloe Moran, your announcer. Thank you, and remember this is the year we choose life. God bless. praise. And that's uh, our event committee. They have put all the pastellas pastella, and uh, decoration. Let's give God a hand for them uh, taking time out. God bless y'all so much. Amen. Well, um, amen. I even think there's some on the outside at the end of, in the end, but well, we'll wait till the end come. Amen. All right. We're going to get our hearts and our mind prepared for joyfully. God loves a, a cheerful giver. And uh, we, when we give, we should give joyfully to the King of glory. Amen. And let me see the hand of people that love. I mean, you joyfully give to God. You just love giving to God. Whatever you're giving. Give it freely to God. If it's your time, whether it's your seed, whether it's your whatever you're doing for someone else, do it out of the spirit of joy. Amen? All right. As we stand before, let us all get our hearts and minds ready to plant into the kingdom. Amen. And read our tithing pledge together boldly in Jesus mighty name I am a tither and I support the kingdom of God on this earth I believe that the Parkview Christian Life Center is doing kingdom business therefore I plant my seed in great ground that will bring forth prosperity in every area of my life I have no time for doubt or doubters I am taught to obey the word of God so that the blessing of Christ shall overtake me and the favor of God shall find me and my cup shall run over. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's seed time. Amen. Glory, God.
God, in the awesome mighty name of Jesus, we give you praise and glory. Thank you for every seed that you have given to the sower. And blessing God, press now, shaking together and running over. Your scripture says, shall men give into our bosom. And we give you praise. In the awesome mighty name of Jesus Christ, let every heart say, amen. Amen. Well, let's give God a hand as our sunbeam. And they're coming forth. And bless us. And as uh, you always hear uh, Sister Johnson saying that if you have some young people and they want to be a part of the choir, be sure to encourage them to come out or to be a part of any uh, activities during out, throughout the year that we have for our youth. Encourage them to come out and be a part of it. Amen. Come on, Sunbeam. Amen. Amen. Standing down in my heart. Down in my heart. Down in my heart. I got the pieces, passes, understanding down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I got the peace of Jesus in my heart. Yes, I'm so happy. and Redeemer down in my heart. Down in my heart. Down in my heart. I got the wonderful love of my blessed Redeemer down in my heart. Down in Listen, when they got to the vamp, say, I'm so happy, so very happy. I said, uh oh, I heard some tunes. Okay, Tina, yes. Sister Daly, excuse me. 
Did you not hear that? Yeah, you know, I'm recruiting early. You know, we recruit, we recruit early. I heard that. So that is so awesome to see them working their gift already at three. Some of them are two, three, four, five years old. Amen. I have some that have graduated to the little ones. I have the little ones and our teenagers. And I want to give God a praise just for them as well. Hallelujah. Glory to God. They truly love the Lord. I, I said this before, their work ethic is always amazing to me because they want to go over it again and again and again. And so we're in that tech age. And little, where's little Adriana? Right, wave your hand. Wave it. Wave it, baby. So she's new to our choir. And she's like, I have my cell phone. Can you let me know what the songs are? Okay, then. All right. And so she has her songs on her still. So we're in that tech age where they're like, give me the songs, you know. Some of us, we still write it down or print it out. But they're like, give us the songs on our phone so we can study through the week. And so I thank God for that. Amen. Amen.
Closer and closer to what they say is Jesus' birth. And we love to talk about him in our choir rehearsals. And the song they're singing today is called Now Behold the Lamb. Amen. Now Behold the Lamb, the precious Lamb of God, born into sin that I may live again. Come on, somebody call him the precious Lamb of God. Amen. Lord. May live again. His 
Bless you, Brother Dawn. How you doing? Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory, God. Amen. Glory, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. All that's running through my mind right now is just how much we need Jesus. How desperately we need the Lord. I don't believe I'm by, by myself. Anybody else in here know? How much you need, how much we need the Lord, how much we desperately need Jesus, how weak we are, and how strong He is, how temporal we are. We're just temporary. And he's from everlasting to everlasting. He is the Alpha, Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning. He is the ending. He's Yeshua, Hamashiach. Hallelujah. How desperately we need him and if we ever get to the point where we realize that we can do nothing without him but with him all things are possible so we set the atmosphere spiritual atmosphere for what God want to say to us today I'm only calling on those that know they need him to give him a praise. Amen. If you know you need him. Hallelujah, Lord. Glory, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. In the awesome, mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father God, in Jesus' mighty name, we come knowing of your divine deutimous power, the, the enabling power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for him. 
Thank you for the Spirit of God who can dwell in us. Thank you for those who have already received them. Thank you right now. God, we declare yokes are broken. We declare burdens has already been destroyed. The devil has already been defeated. And all power has been ripped out of his hand. Hallelujah. And he is just as a roaring lion. Lion. Not a lion, as one. And we say thank you right now. Let your word go forth with power, understanding, wisdom, God, that we may hear it and receive it and activate it. And in Jesus' name, let every heart say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us go to John chapter 9. I want to finish up something I started uh, yesterday. And um, the Spirit of the Lord sometimes just leave a lot of meat on the bone. And you have to go back and grab it. Amen. Jesus, in chapter 9, verse 1, it says, And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And as his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man of his, or his parents, that he should be born blind? Jesus answered, Neither has his, this man sinned nor his parent, but that the word, the works of God should be, uh, should be made manifest in him. Hallelujah. I must work the work of him that sent me while it is day, night cometh, when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he sped on the ground and made clay of, of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay and said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is interpret sin. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. The neighbors, therefore, the neighbors, <laughs> therefore, and they which before him seen, uh, had seen him that was, that was blind said, Is not this he that sat and begged. Some said, this is he. Others said, this is like him. But he said, I am he. Hallelujah. Amen, somebody. You may be seated in the presence of God. Jesus comes along and his disciples asked him this important question because they saw a man, uh, we call it an infirmity or dealing with some type of illness, sickness, or condition. This man was born without sight. And because he was born without sight, the disciples quite naturally thought somebody had done something to cause this situation to happen. He, so they asked him, they said, Master, who sinned? that this man was born blind. Did his parent? Is that the reason this child is in this situation? Or did he sin? They're equating, his disciple is equating that if something is going on with you, you have had, you had to have done something sinful. And in many cases, when you're dealing with God, he can take you through something. And you can search back over your life and realize, I didn't do anything. And some people wonder, well, you had to do something if you're going through that. But Jesus works in some mysterious ways. Jesus talked one time, he said, uh, if a tree is bearing good fruit, he purged the tree. The tree already doing good, Jesus said, but because it's doing so good, I have to purge it. Purging me, it cut it back. 
Anybody know anything about growing fruit? Sometimes a limb on a tree can get so heavy with the fruit that it can destroy the whole limb. So in order to save that limb, you have to cut the limb back. It's called purging. The limb wasn't doing nothing but blooming. Sometime in our life, in our blooming seasons, God will cut us back. And the, the onlooker would think that, well, evidently you done done something wrong because you was blooming and now you're cut back. But the reason God cut or said he purged people is that they would bear more fruit. This is not my message today, but I just want you to hear this. If you're going through something in life and you got the neighbors and the naysayers uh, whispering behind your back that you had to do something wrong, and uh, because you're not blooming this year like you were blooming last year, and the only thing they understand is blooming, you just tell them, I, I, I may not look good this year, but what God taking me through, I'm going to be stronger than I ever been. So when I come back forth, I'm going to bloom again, and I'm going to be strong enough to hold what's on me. Come on, give God a, just a praise for that. If you're going through something, realize that God is making you stronger for what he's about to bless you with. Y'all, come on, y'all better get that. God, say that, God is making me stronger, God is making me stronger. this season because he got a heavy blessing next season. Come on, come on, really give God praise for that. I mean, I want y'all to really get that because the devil will depress you in this season if you don't know that God is getting you ready for bigger and better things. Amen. So if anybody having a cutback season right now, give God a shout praise. Come on. Don't give the devil no victory. Don't give the devil no victory. Don't you mumble. Don't you complain. Just tell God, I thank you for my purging season. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Glory be to God. Jesus said, this man had done nothing wrong. He said, but watch what he said. He said, but he was born blind, put in this condition that when Jesus come along, he may do a miracle in his life. The work of God. Only what God can do. Because if you were born blind, it's going to take God moving. There's a certain situation in our life that only God can get us out of. And so Jesus said, he was born this way so nobody would able to be able to deny his formal condition. Even when he uh, received his sight, uh, the Pharisees, they said, we don't believe it. And they went and called his parents. And the parents said, yeah, well, we don't know how he got his sight, but we do know he was born blind. And they said, ask him, he of age. And they did that because they had said that if you testified that Jesus is Lord, they were going to put you out of their church. It was the synagogue at that time. So the parents evidently was members of the church or the synagogue, and they didn't want to confess Jesus as Lord. So they just said, ask him. And so they brought him back in again, and uh, they said, uh, give God the praise. Because we know that this man that you're talking about, open your eyes, a sinner. And he said, I don't know if he's a sinner or not. All I know is I was blind. And now I see. Oh, y'all can say anything y'all want about Jesus. All I know ever since he came into my life, I've been blessed. 
That's why I praise him. Amen, somebody. How many of y'all can say God has really shifted your life ever since he have come into your life? The main thing is that Jesus said that he says, I must work, I must work. And he used the word must. I must work the assignment that God sent me to work while it is day. Jesus said, God sent me to work. He sent me on an assignment. And Jesus said, this assignment I have of my father, I must finish it while it is day. He said, because the night is coming. Someone say, night cometh. And Jesus said, no man going to be able to work when the night come. Male or female. Well, Jesus is saying that light, day is life. He said, I'm going to do the work of God while I have life. For night cometh, that's death. That's a transition of the saint. He said, when night cometh, I'm not going to be able to do any more work. So he said, while it's day, I must work the assignment of God. And look how he put emphasis on it. He said, because night cometh. Amen, somebody. Jesus said, while you are alive, it is called day. He said, but one day, night cometh. And whatever you were planning to do for God, you can't do it when the night come. Amen, somebody. So Jesus said, what are you going to do between daylight and night? That is called time. Amen, somebody. The only thing all of us have that is the base of the same is time. We all get 24 hours in a day. After we're born again, we don't know now. We don't, here's the thing about it. We don't know when night comes. Night is coming, but we don't know when. That's why you got to be busy for God. Because you don't know when night coming. Now y'all sitting here like y'all have, y'all sitting here like y'all ain't caught on yet. Jesus saying, Night is coming to all of us. And night, night don't have any, night is a strange thing. It, it gives some of us more nights than to give others. In other words, you don't know when night comes. Sometimes it comes when children are before they're 10 years old. It comes sometime before they're 20. And sometimes it don't come to somebody after 100. And since we don't know when the night is coming, you got to work while it's day. It's called time is this important commodity that once you spend it, once you spend time, you can't get it back. How many of you know you can lose money and make more money? How many of you know you can total loss a car and go buy another one the next day? Most things you're able to get back, but one thing you can never get back is time. So that's why you got to be very careful with your time. It is the most important thing in the world. So you got to know how to spend it. And you got to know who to spend it on. Amen, somebody. And the number one person to spend time on is Christ Jesus. But you can't spend time for Christ until you get to know Christ. You got to know him. You got to be born again. You got to confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. You got to become a child of God. And once you become a child of God, then you are able to say, God, just like I said by these young people, Amen. They got a lot of time, God willing, to testify of the goodness of God, to grow in Christ. Amen. Time is so important. 
And so Jesus said, I got to work while it's day. You know, Jesus didn't spend a lot of time with foolishness. Amen. Jesus didn't spend a lot of time letting people get him down. How much time do, I mean, let's think about it. How much time have a person, have, have people, do people waste by being angry with other people? How many times we waste by being full of bitterness, resentment, unforgiveness, hateful spirit, mean spirit, amen, holding on to stuff ever since high school. For some of us that have been out of high school a long time ago. Really, when you start getting filled with the Holy Spirit and start building a relationship with God and start seeing purpose in your life, you don't have time for bitterness and anger and unforgiveness. You will let that stuff go because you see something greater. And God, Jesus didn't let the people get him to the point where he was an efficient worker or efficient worker for God. See, a lot of times we can't, uh, a lot of times the reason we can't give God quality time because we got a lot of stuff we want to do. And Jesus said, really, if you were just to seek the kingdom of God first. Okay, watch it. We got a lot of things we want to do with our time. A lot of places we want to go with our time. A lot of people we want to spend with our time. And some, a lot of time, Jesus is on the back burner of time. Amen. We, 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 we basically put Jesus on the shelf and run off and do what we want to do. And then trouble and trials and dilemma come in our life. We pull him off the shelf. And we say, Lord, we need you now. And Jesus said, you've been needing me in everything you do. I need to be a part of it. Matter of fact, matter of fact, Jesus called for the, God called for the first fruit of everything. Somebody say first fruit. Really, listen, Jesus Christ, God the Father, even the Holy Spirit, should not get our second hand of anything. The first fruit of every morning, your time should go to God. The dew of the morning. The Bible said that God would meet Adam in the cool of the day. See, when you get up in the morning, a thousand things are running through your head. You got a thousand tasks to do. And, if, and you got to hit, someone got to get on the highway, get to work, get the children for school, try to get some breakfast, all this stuff, get dressed. And we're so busy trying to do what we do that we forgot that the first fruit of that day belongs to God. You ought to get up in the morning and say, Lord, whatever, whatever I got to do can wait. I got to get up and say, thank you, Lord. I got to read me a scripture, God. I got to just give you praise, God, because if it had not been for you, Lord, giving me more time, I wouldn't have nothing to be worried about. I, got, I have someone, he said something one day, I said, man, that's good. He, I said, that's good. We was talking about, um, you're talking about uh, how people complain all the time. Well, you don't really have a lot of time to complain. You shouldn't do all that complaining. Complaining only pleased the devil. He loved to hear people murmuring and complaining. Amen. But he was talking, we were talking about, he said, man, so many people complaining. They complain about everything. It rained. When it rained, they won't rain to fall, but when it rained, they complain about the rain. They say it's too hot. When it get cold, they say it's too cold. Amen. That's anything. They just find a reason to complain about everybody, anything, just complaining people. Then he say, I don't complain about nothing. I said, why you don't complain about anything? He said, because I don't even have to be here. He said, supposing I was in my grave today. He said, when I think about where I could be, it make me take my complaints and throw them in the trash can. Come on now, somebody. When you think about 
God has given us life. And it, it'll help you if you think about where we could be. And then you think about God has given us life. Then it ought to help you not to complain. Lord, I'm alive. And God, as long as there's breath in my body and you walking beside me, I can overcome anything. Hallelujah, somebody. Jesus said to this man, watch this. Jesus said to this man, he said, I must work the work of day while it's, uh, work of God while it's day. And he said, as long as I'm in the world, he said, I am the light of the world. Jesus said, as long as I'm in the world, I am light. If you are walking with God, you're walking in life and light. If you're walking with God, oh, Jesus. I didn't say if you came to church. You came to church today to hear this message, worship God, but then you're going to leave here to walk with God. Hallelujah. Church is not a club, it's not a dance hall, it's not some social event. Church is a place you come to hear the Word of God, you receive God's Word, you activate God's Word, and you see God's Word work. How do you know God's Word works? God's Word has power to shift your life if you just put it in motion. Hallelujah. So Jesus said, I am the light of the world. The Bible said, if a man say that they walk with God, because God is light, and you say, I walk with God, but I walk in darkness, he said, you don't tell the truth. It's impossible to walk with God and stay in darkness. When you spend time walking with God, he illuminates your mind. He opens up your thoughts. He restores your joy. Hallelujah, somebody. It's good to be living, not existing. I don't, listen, I don't want to have no time existing. I want to walk in life. Amen. I'm trying to preach to you today. Listen, we are not designed to carry all this suppressed spirit, hopelessness, all this uh, anger and bitterness. God ain't designed us for that. That's why if you carry it, you can have a nervous breakdown. You can have a stroke, anxiety attack. Because God ain't never designed his children to carry all that stuff in their soul. We were created in the image of God. And God doesn't have that in his spirit. We were created, created like God. Amen. That's why the Bible said the joy of the Lord, that's what gives me strength. All this other stuff don't give me strength. God, joy will give me strength. So what the devil has done, watch this. Jesus, Jesus came along and he said, listen, I came to work the work of God. Jesus said, I came to make your life better. So whatever we're burdened down with, Jesus said, look, we don't have to, it doesn't have to be a blind man. It could be you today. If Jesus had walked by you today, you may not be blind, but he would have saw what caused you trouble. And he said, I came to work the work of God, so whatever somebody burdened down with, I'm going to lift it. God said, I'm going to use the power of God to heal you everywhere you hurt. No matter who you are, God has power to deliver you. I want to say it again. No matter who you are, no matter what you're going through, Jesus Christ has power to deliver you. His work is to make you better. His work is to give you joy. His work is to lift you up if you're down. His work is to make, bring you closer to him. Amen. And he's able to do it. Matter of fact, when they saw that blind man, watch what they said. Somebody said, see, God will work on you so much in such a powerful way that people won't recognize you. I mean, God can change you so much. People won't even know where you got your joy from. He, people won't know where you got your new, renewed spirit from. Amen. They'll wonder why you're smiling. 
They'll wonder where your new hope came from. Yeah. Amen. They'll wonder why you're dressing up on Sunday morning. They'll wonder where you're going. They'll wonder why you're coming back happy. They'll wonder why you're getting your life together. They'll wonder why they can't get on your nerve no more. They'll wonder why they can't get you down no more or hold you down. They'll be wondering what in the world that happened to you. Amen. It's something when people don't recognize you because there are some people, they can say words to you and mess up your whole day. But when you start walking with Jesus, amen, and he lifts you up, they can't bring you back down, and he'll make you all new. If you're still a person that's easily offended and easily, somebody can easily bring you down, start walking with Jesus. They didn't recognize this man. He was born blind, and the first thing they said, somebody say, is this the man that was beggar? Is this that beggar? He sure don't look like a beggar now. He ain't begging now. He is rejoicing. And some said, no, that's not him. That can't be him. That can't be the same man that we've been throwing nickels and dimes and pinning to. That can't be the same man walking around here blind. And other ones say, oh, yes, that's him. Some say, nah, that ain't him. Some say, it looked like him, but it's not him. Then he spoke up. And he said, I am. I am he. He used the word I am. I am he. Amen. He had to introduce himself to that crowd because Jesus had shifted his life. That's what he want to do today. And then when he shifts our lives, he wants us to understand now what is the importance of time. I want you to put on the screen, uh, media, put this on the screen for me. Put up, put up Psalm, amen. Put up the book of Psalms, hallelujah. And I want to put up Psalms, amen, uh, 39, verse 4 and 5. You have it, just go to it. Psalm 39, verse 4 and 5. And look what the psalm writer says to us. Glory be the God. Psalm 39, verse 4, verse 5. Amen. Look on the screen. He says, Lord, see, time, God didn't save you that you shift your time to. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. See, God don't save us to waste time. Now, some of y'all, now listen, listen. Hear what God is saying. He saved us, and he saved us that we will, someone say the word, repent. Repent, repent means that you turn from one way and start going another way. When he saved me, I don't share this before, when he saved me, I was, the night I really got ready to turn my life around was Friday night. It was a Friday night, and I went to, with my friends, went out to dance at a club. That's what my, that was my weekend time. Living for the weekend. Oh, yes. Can't wait to Friday. Paid the eagle fly on Friday, and I'm going to party on Friday. That's my time. I got it planned. I'm not, my, I'm not working while it's day. I'm partying yeah, yeah. while it's day. I'm partying like night is never coming. Y'all know night is death, right? Jesus worked, had been working me a long time anyway. That Friday night was unusual. The Spirit of God got on me in the nightclub. Now, I want y'all to know that it's been over 40 years ago. <laughs> Everybody listening, I didn't say it was last Friday. 
That had been a long time ago. I'm telling a true testimony. Spirit of God came in the nightclub. Now, I know y'all, some religious people, oh, God don't come to the nightclub. Oh, yes, he do. Amen. At least he came one time. I know that. Amen. Amen. I hear you. I hear you saying where he came and got you from, but I, I'm going to preach my sermon now. <laughs> That's where he came. Stay with me, church. And it was uh, getting about 10, about 11 o'clock. I just couldn't stay. I told the guys, I said, man, I got to get up out of here. They said, what's wrong? I said, I couldn't tell them. I just knew that was it. I got up that Saturday morning and got in my car outdoors and called on Jesus. And he filled that car with his spirit. He filled me with his spirit. Man, as the song said, you should have been there when I came through. <laughs> Amen. It was life changing, transformation. It was the inviting of God in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I, 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 he did not save me to go back to the nightclub. He did not save me to stop by ABC, XYZ, <laughs> and pick up a bag. or whatever they do these days. He did not save me to continue that lifestyle. He did not do that. Jesus didn't do that. He saved me and said, now you have daytime. One day, your night coming and you won't be able to work for me no more. Night is the day your last breath leaves. Listen, I get night coming for all of us. And some of us have a lot of days behind us already. I'm about through preaching, hang in there with me. So, I, so, 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 so he didn't save me. I'm going to go back to that scripture in a minute. He didn't save me to give my time. Like, I save you, not going back. Going back to your lifestyle. He saved me to say now, and I was about 24 years old. And the rest of my life from 24 to where I am today, it's been giving God my time. Oh. I've been giving him my day. And I still know night coming. And then I won't be able to stand before you no more. That's why I'm busy while it's day. Because the night is coming. I don't have time for nobody to depress me. I don't have time for revenge. I don't have time to dibble and dab in foolishness. I don't have time to hold bitterness against nobody. God lift me up not to waste my time in foolishness. And he did the same thing for you. All you have is time. So put that song back up. And look what this songwriter says about us. Psalm, put it back up on the screen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, let me turn. Y'all, y'all, y'all wasting my time. All right, here we go. Look what he says. Lord, make me to know my end. And Lord, Help me to measure my days. How much is it that I may know how 
weak and frail I am. That I may know that I'm not going to be around forever. Verse 34, go to the next verse. Behold, thou hast made my days as just a hand breath, and my age is as nothing before you. Verily, every man at his best, at our very best, is altogether vanity weak. Amen, somebody. Amen. So, Lord, I, I know what you did. You, 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 you came along and you, you, you said, I'm going to work. Listen, church, he saw a blind man, right? He said, I'm going to work the work of God while it's day. He opened that blind, blind man's eyes. The blind man, when he opened his eyes, he went to talking about how good God is. He, he spent his time, even for experienced theologians, people who had studied the scroll, they said to him, they said, this man's of the sinner. He said, I don't know what you want us to call him. All I know is that this man shifts my life. So he's talking about the goodness of God. God has changed him so much, and the testimony has changed that people are trying to take away his testimony. He said, but I can't help but tell you what God did for me. I want somebody in part of you right now can look back over your life. See, it's time to quit playing church. It's time to realize we serve a good God that have done some great things for us. Sometimes we can take the goodness of God for granted. But anybody here today that can look back at your life and say, God, I want to thank you. You done brought me from a mighty long way. Hallelujah. In every step of the way, God, it's been you walking with me. You keep blessing me over and over again. And God, I want to take time out now to give you praise. I mean, take time out for the time you miss giving God praise. Hallelujah. Help me to number my days. Help me realize I don't have as much time as I used to have. Help me realize we don't know how much time we have. So, God, we can open up our mouths every day and be grateful and be thankful and use our time wisely, lifting up the blood-stained banner of Jesus and giving God some praise. Hallelujah, somebody. You just don't know how good God is right now. Sometimes the cares of this world will make us forget how good God is. Sometimes God can bless you with so much you can forget how good God is trying to keep up with what he done gave you. Suppose your lights are off. Now you're too busy crying and complaining because you need your lights back on. I can take you to some places where there is no electricity. Oh, come on now. And they are lifting up the name of Jesus and giving him praise. Here's my advice for you. If you got lights off, card, card note due, house about to be foreclosed, quit worrying about that stuff. You got time to give God praise. Oh, y'all done missed it. It's something about just quit worrying about things and start saying, God, I'll just give you praise. I have lights that can be turned back on. Some folk have, can't have light turned on. So I'm going to praise you in the dark. I need five or six of y'all that got it. I'll praise you in the dark. I'll praise you not understanding how I'm going to get out of this. I'm just going to give you praise anyhow. Any anyhow praises in here? Sometime you got to know where you are and know what God called you to. Amen. If you watch through the Bible, every time Jesus would renew someone or save them, they would cling to Jesus. Amen. 
Every time he would heal someone or deliver someone, they would cling to Jesus. And when Mary got in Simon's home, y'all remember the Bible? And, Simon, and, and, and Jesus sitting there, and they were questioning Jesus. And Mary bust in that room. And Mary started crying at Jesus' feet. And they said if he knew what type of woman this was, he wouldn't let him, her touch him. And this woman just started crying at Jesus' feet. And Jesus said, as long as the earth remained, this woman would be remembered Hallelujah. for her worship. Amen. Jesus had blessed her, so she wanted to worship him. God have called us to spend our time. Yeah, we're going to have plenty of leisure time, but God called us to give our time for the kingdom. So Jesus, I got to work while it's day, night coming. Night gonna come. I'm gonna work right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna heal this blind man. I'm gonna I'm gonna take two fish and five loaves of bread. I'm gonna feed the multitude. I'm gonna preach to the sinners. Jesus got busy with his time. And then 33 years old and a half, they put him on a cross. And then he died on that cross. And then he got up on the third day. And he declared, I am Alpha and Omega. I am the beginning and the end. I am he that was dead, but now I'm alive, and I'm not going to die no more. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. So, so God, God wants us to know where we are. It is so important that we quit being so stressed out. Don't you know God have you covered? Somebody, watch this. God has you covered. From the top of your head, I, Lord, I'm trying to stay calm, to the sole of your feet, God has you covered. Amen. God has you covered. All you got to do is start opening up your mouth and telling somebody about how good God is. Start testifying how good he's been to you and watch God work in your life. He has, let me close, he has you covered. How many of y'all believe that right now? Your all, he can meet all your needs. Your cup can run over. Anybody hearing me today? Hallelujah. Jesus said, why are you so stressed out? God feed the birds. But one thing the birds do that we don't do. You know when the birds get up in the morning? They don't know what they're going to eat. They don't even know what they're going to eat. They don't know where the worm or the bug coming from. When the sun rises, the birds get up and start singing. The first fruit of their day, they sing. Amen, somebody. Lift your hand toward me right now. God, I declare right now in Jesus' name that the things the devil has brought to the minds and hearts of your children about here's what you ought to worry about. Here's what you ought to spend time stressing about. I come against it right now in the name of Jesus. And God, I pray that uh, they be renewed in the spirit of their mind. Somebody shout, God, you have me. Covered. All my needs are already met. No stress, no strain, no worry. I will spend my time not stressing. I'm going to spend my time 
praising your name. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Listen, church. Listen, church. That's what I just. Uh, that's what I just prayed. Amen. That's what I just prayed. Amen. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. One minute. Uh, that's what I just prayed. Amen. Listen. I want everybody listening. The prayer I just had you pray, and I just said that God is going to reveal. God is ready to reveal that all these things that have you burn them down, all these things that have you stressed out and robbing you of your time, God is about to reveal to you how well he can take care of you. Mm. Listen to me. I'm not going to even lift my voice. Those that have ears to hear, let them hear. I just said, somebody say, I'm receiving it right now. All those things. Now don't, I didn't say repeat everything. Just say, I'm receiving it right now. Now listen to the rest. All those things, all the cares, of this world that's robbing you of your time. God just spoke to you through your man of God to say this to you, that he's going to reveal to you that he have you covered and he's already taken care Hallelujah. of those things. Listen, the Bible says we are to cast all our cares upon him. For he cares about us. The devil want to rob us of time through stressing. I'm just preaching to you. God is going to relieve that so you can walk in the freedom that he wants you to walk into. Come on, give God a real praise. I am preaching what I know. I don't stress. I don't strain. I don't worry. I got too much time to just give to God. He take care of the rest. Hallelujah, God. He got you covered. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you right now, God. Hallelujah, God. Let your glory fall, God, on the hearts and minds, and let our time be free to serve you, God, and you meeting all our needs according to riches and glory. And we're learning how to be content in every situation and let every heart say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Well, let the Redeemer of the Lord give him a shout praise today. Oh, God is good. How many of y'all received that today? Hallelujah. Let us stand. Hallelujah. Fret not. Not even because of evildoers. Hallelujah. Father God, I come before you now. I pray that you just speak to us. Anyone that's 
busy, comrade about. As you said to Martha, Mary have chosen that one good thing that shall never be taken away from her. She's not busy, but she have found how to worship. Hallelujah. This is what we're going to do. If there's someone here today, I know Lord has spoken to you about how we can be so confused and we can be all over the place with our lives, no clear direction. And the Holy Spirit don't spoke today saying, God want to put you on a straight path, a journey where your life has shifted, where you have purpose, kingdom-minded purpose. We don't waste enough time already on other things. It's time to get in line with God. Amen? Amen. So if you're here today and you say, Lord, I want you to speak to me. And I want to speak back to you, God, about salvation. I want to be born of the Spirit, born again of the Holy Spirit. All this time you've been without God. Now God said, I want to come and be in you directing your life. If you're here today and you said, I want to receive Jesus, I'm going to ask that you come down and meet me right here. You want to receive Jesus. You want to receive salvation. This is your day to be a child of the living God. If that be in it, be bold in Jesus' mighty name, wherever you may be standing. Come and receive Christ as your Lord and your Savior. He died. Oh my God, he will shift you into a new dimension a new spirit, a new way of seeing things. If there anyone be bold, you know you're not child of God. You know you're not a child of God. You know if you were to die today, you would not be in his presence. And God, Jesus wants you to be in his presence now, absent from the body, still in his presence. Amen. Next, if there anyone who say, well, Lord, I'm here, and what I want to receive I just want to become a part of this local ministry. You're already a child of God. You, hallelujah. You've been born again, received Christ, but you need to connect to a place of worship, a place that you will hear the word, you will grow with other people and work for the kingdom. There be any here for the day that's saying, I want to receive Christ and I'll not receive Christ. I want to be a part of this local church. Be bold in Jesus' name and come down. Give God a hand as they're coming from back there. Hallelujah. Are there any others? This is your day. Still for salvation, still for membership. If there be any, be bold as in Jesus' name and say, here I am, God. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God a real praise as they're coming. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, come on, young ladies, uh, your children, come on. Any other? Come on, let's take this time to be bold. Wherever you're standing, I know if God done spoke to you, and the, the minute God speak to you, the devil try to get busy too. So if there be any, be bold in Jesus' name. All right, you may be seated in his presence. We're going to see what we have here. We're going to baptize. Those that are getting ready to be baptized, I'm going to go ahead and ask that you guys go ahead and go up there now. Uh, deep, deep talk. Get them a hand as they're going. Pastor Babers, you have Veronica Belton Pittman and Michael Pittman, Christian Experience. All right. Sonia Hicks, Patrick Hicks, and Jasmine Hicks, candidate for baptism. Amen. 
All right. Come on, y'all stand right here before me. Let me have the mic. Uh, I'm going to have you guys uh, repeat after me. Y'all going to do the center prayer. Amen. Y'all ready to receive Jesus? Y'all ready? All right. Amen. Y'all old enough. Y'all ready. Say, Father God. Father God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I come before you. I come before you. I confess my sins. I confess my sins. I believe. I believe that you died. That you died for my sins. For my sins. From my heart. From my heart. I speak. I speak with my mouth. With my mouth. About the death. About the death. Resurrection. Resurrection. And salvation of the Lord. And salvation of the Lord. I am. I am. Right now. Right now. A child, a child of the living God. Of the living God. Amen. Amen. God bless y'all. Sister Hicks, God bless your daughters and your son. Amen. All right. And uh, I'm going to give y'all the right hand of fellowship. Glad that you guys are here today. Amen. In a mighty way, God got plans for your lives. Amen. Yes. Y'all come for prayer. The whole family. Amen. Okay. Look here. Lakia, can you come up here, please? I need you to pray for me. And pray for my family. Amen. And Lakia, because she's part of my family. Oh. And then after that, I want my mama to pray for me, you, Lily, and Sister Babers to cover us because she got a lot from you in prayer. I learned that. Right. So I need no, her to I'm cover sure. all of Just let me do it this morning. Amen. After Just, church. Yeah, we'll do that afterwards. Yeah, all right. I need, no, I need to advance the word. Okay, we will. Father God, in Jesus' mighty name, I lift up each and every person right here, this whole family, God. As you said in your word, God, you worked the work of God while it's day, meaning you get into our lives and whatever is wrong, you work it out. And God, I pray for the Smith family. I pray for Sister Johnson, God, that all things are already working together for good. And God, that you will bring them into the full knowledge that you are working things out according to your will and according to your plans. And I say thank you right now for the power of the Holy Spirit and the power of your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Let every heart say amen. amen. God bless you so much. Amen. All right, we'll do it. Yeah, I need, I need <laughs> amen. Father God, in Jesus' name, I love up Brother Smith. And God, I just pray that the Spirit of God that dwelleth and we'll just shift him, God. Shift him in every way that you want to shift him, God. Bring the understanding, revelation according to your will, God. And I give you praise and glory because, again, God, you worked the work of God. And you work in our lives wherever we need and whenever we need it. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Hallelujah. All right, I'm going to have you guys go that direction. Amen. All right, we're ready to baptize in the awesome mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 